What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. It was an eventful day yesterday, specifically last night, when we did get our first look at the pricing for the Nintendo Online Service. I made a full video about that. Unfortunately, it was a little late and I couldn't make it in Newswave for this today. So go check that video out. I'm sure a lot of you guys will be talking about it in the comments below. But there's still a lot of other stuff that happened yesterday as well outside of that and the headset issue. So you know what? Let's get started here, guys. Um, before I get started, guys, make sure you go check out our subreddit. I think we're trying to get uh, over 500 members on there now. It's Reddit dot com slash r slash spawn wave go get signed up there because we'll have a full reddit post about this video if you want to talk on there as well it makes it a little easier for me getting lost in the youtube comments our first bit of news guys comes from rhyme remember how we talked about rhyme the other day and how the developers were trying to kind of uh i guess see if hackers can actually crack through the de novo protection that they had on there and if they did they would release a fully uh, de novo free DRM free version of the game and guess what it happened in record time yes the game has already been cracked and the hacker going by the name of bald man uh, went through it, actually in some detail about what was going on with rhyme for example a lot of people do seem to complain about the loading times on the PC version in particular being kind of kind of long or at least longer than they should be well that's apparently because instead of the typical thousand or so triggers or checks that are made for different de novo checks things like uh, near for example or prey apparently they usually make like a thousand calls during a load screen like that well <laughs> apparently rhyme makes 300,000 calls or checkpoints if you want to say that during that loading span to check to see if you actually own the game. Dave went as far as to say that at times protection would be kind of like the calls would be firing at 10 to 30 triggers, is what they're calling them, per second during gameplay. So it's interesting. There's a good chance though, without this protection, the game will just run better. Like it might even run way better, honestly, on PCs. And that could be a good thing. Now it, it's very interesting to see how fast they were able to crack this and if they can actually use this knowledge in the future for any future games that come out that with the novo protection um it's it's really funny though because i bet you if they didn't say anything about this it they would not have prioritized this it's almost like because they were called out on it indirectly they were like you know what? we're just gonna crack this thing and yes gray box has come out and said you know what we will release the drm free version and we will stick to our word and they didn't say when exactly but they did say a major update is coming next week so maybe that's the case well at least we know guys if you are a developer of a game and you want to challenge hackers you better be prepared because they are uh, uh, they are ready to rise to the occasion. And guys, if you've been really frustrated with the NBA Playgrounds and how we still don't have up any update for the Switch version to get online play, well, they hear you. Saber Interactive is definitely listening and I guess they feel bad or they want to at least try to maintain customer relations. So they are going to release what is essentially on their part, I guess, a, a gift or a present to anyone who bought NBA Playgrounds or came into possession of it, I guess, uh, before this patch goes out that will add online play. They're going to give everyone who did that Shaq Fu A Legend Reborn, which is another game that they're working on that's supposed to be out this fall. And this was made official in a statement from Matthew Karch for the CEO of Saber Interactive. He said, We sincerely apologize for the delay and want to let everyone know the fix will be coming very soon. But words are cheap and games are not. So we're giving everyone that bought NBA Playgrounds on Nintendo Switch before the online play patch hits a free copy of Shaq Fu Legend Reborn on Switch when it's available this fall to express our gratitude. And I think most retro gamers will look at that and say, oh, come on, you're giving us Shaq Fu? That's, that's not a present. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that's a burden. Now, in, in this case, you know, the game looks like they are having some fun with uh, maybe older gamers who do remember the atrocity that was Shaq Fu at the time. And it does look like it might be a fun game to the sense of uh, like, a, like a stupid kind of fun game, you know, where <laughs> if you're going to play it, it'll be funny. It'll have some good laughs. It'll be kind of fun, but it's not a, like a full price game, obviously. So, you know what? It's free. It's something. They're still releasing the patch and they did kind of hint that maybe they'll do some more stuff going forward because they do seem to at least heavily regret not getting this patch out sooner. They're smaller companies. So, you know what? It's not like it's a triple A company doing this. I think a lot of people are still frustrated, but at this point, as long as they do release the patch, give us online play, and they're presenting us with one of their other works that they are going to have to try to make money on by selling, I'm okay with this. You know what? It, it's it's not the biggest deal in the world. As soon as it comes out, I'll be happy. I'll play it. And then I guess I'll play Shaq Fu. Oh, and Shaq Fu is out this 
fall, so we still have a little bit of time to wait for that one, but at least the update is coming soon. They they say that they have it mostly finished. There's just some logistical issues right now with Nintendo to iron out for them to actually get it to us. Next bit of news, guys, comes from our friends over at Take Two. Now, we know Take Two a couple different ways. One, we know them from Grand Theft Auto because they kind of publish Grand Theft Auto V, which is a very popular game. Of course, you also have things like NBA 2K series, WWE 2K. And they were asked some questions about the Switch. This was over on GameSpot.com, and they had some interesting stuff to say about it. Now, they were pretty much asked about the Switch in general. Their first kind of words were, hey, we were there front and center with NBA 2K, and, and they're not wrong. I mean, they, they were the first real big company to, to stand up and say, hey, we're putting this game out. It's going to come out all across the board with everything else. It's not going to be some weird, oh, you get it a month later or something. No, same day as everything else, Nintendo Switch will be there. And then take two CEO, Mr. Zelnick, also had a few other words about the Switch. He said, we believe in it. We see it the way Nintendo does. It's been a very successful launch. It remains to be seen how it does, but we're excited about it. Assuming there is an install base, we'll be there. Not with all of our titles, but selectively. So now we gotta figure out what games they're gonna bring over because it's pretty obvious the switch will continue to sell now that we know the pricing for their online service which is extremely fair especially since they'll be giving us games with added online service that's just one more thing to push the switch forward considering the opposition does 50 and 60 or 60 dollars a year so uh overall the switch will continue to sell that's not a question the question is what games does take two want to bring over i fully expect a wrestling game to come over like a wwe 2k um some people have made kind of made jokes here and there and said things like carnival games um i would love to see grand theft auto make an appearance will it i i don't know they make a lot of money from it still so why not i mean it ran fine well to an extent on the 360 and the ps3 it would run perfectly fine on the switch so why not bring it over and just give people the option yes the the files are large for grand theft auto it's not going to be a small game so you will have to have a very large sd card or they'll have to really compress it onto one of the 32 gig uh that the game cards they'll have to compress it onto one of the game cards and that might be an issue cost wise it's hard to say right now but at least they know they're watching they're keeping an eye on this switch system that, that they at least supported with NBA 2K, which is a big franchise for them. So I'll be curious to see what is the next game they announce. Again, wrestling to me is probably the next one up. Next bit of news, guys, is pretty quick. It's more about E3 as we go forward. We're going to start hearing different game reveals. In this case, June 10th. Remember how we talked about EA is going to be first up. They're going to be first up to show some games. We talked about Battlefront 2. Yes, it looks like there will be a full gameplay reveal trailer June 10th that night. So I told you guys before, I will be streaming. If you want to jump on and watch it with me, you can. And we will get our first good look hopefully long look at uh, Battlefront 2. I want to see a couple different things such as gameplay, hopefully, hopefully larger maps with more people there and you will also have different vehicles, things like that. There's a lot of stuff I need to see. Maybe even we get a look at a story mission so we can see how this kind of blends in and maybe makes it look more like a single player game at times rather than just essentially a matchmaking game with some story elements thrown in through text. Also another announcement guys is happening this morning. Um, if you're watching this early in the morning, 8, 9 a.m., uh, Need for Speed is going to be announced, or at least a full reveal is going to be shown over on the Need for Speed YouTube channel. So if you're watching this when this first goes up, uh, feel free to, I guess, jump over there if you're a fan of Need for Speed. Now, the new Need for Speed, of course, is not going to be an online only game, much like the previous one was, so they at least learned that lesson, and it looks like now we will have another game to look forward to going into E3, because maybe they'll show more gameplay there. It's interesting that these companies uh, are starting to do these announcements beforehand. That tells me that there are some big plans for E3 in terms of games, and maybe they just can't fit all this stuff in here. We just talked about Nintendo's online service. We now know a lot about Nintendo's online service with pricing. We need to see what the app looks like, but at this point, they, someone like Nintendo, for example, put it out there ahead of time because maybe they don't have enough room. Maybe this is the same case with Need for Speed. You know, we're just gonna have to see, but man, this is, it's already starting, guys. Announcements, reveals, they're already starting. And guys, our next bit of news is actually a delay. It looks like Middle Earth Shadow of War will be pushed nearly seven weeks back. It was originally slated for August 22nd, as most of us saw in that initial trailer, and now it's being pushed to October 10th. And really all they said was that, oh, it's not gonna be ready, basically, in a statement that they made where they said, as with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Monolith is committed to delivering the highest quality experience. 
In order to do this, we have made the difficult decision to move our launch date to ensure that Middle Earth Shadow of War will deliver on that promise. Now they do go on to say they will show more E3, but really it's just not ready is basically what they're saying. Look, our, our deadlines are not being met. We need more time to get this done. And you know what? I'm fine with that. I don't, a lot of people want these games to come out as soon as possible, but then they'll complain that they're broken. You know what? Take your time. I, I, I have plenty of games to play right now. It's okay. And uh, if you need to do this rather than give me a 10 gig patch three weeks later, fine, do it. I, I, I will wait. It's not that big of a deal. Life will move on. I just hope now it's not broken when it comes out October 10th, because then we'll all be curious why you just didn't push it back further since you have already pushed it back once. And our last bit of news is kind of a weird one, actually. Microsoft put out a survey. They generally put out like, a, like an Xbox Live gold survey kind of rewards program that they do where they'll ask you uh, questions on surveys and then give you rewards. In this case, the survey caught a lot of people off guard because it asked about the Nintendo Switch. They went on to ask you, what's your favorite thing about the Nintendo Switch? Things like uh, local multiplayer, micro SD cards, the portability, the Joy-Con controllers, even the game catalog. And then they went on to say, what are your least favorite things about the Switch? The battery life, the internal memory, the technical glitches that we see all over the place right now. The technical glitches, for example, or the lack of backwards compatibility. Basically, they're just trying to get an idea of what people like about this system, what they don't like about it, and people are trying to figure out why, more than likely market research. I mean, trust me when I say Microsoft, Sony, they look at everything around them, including the Switch. We saw Sony's president there taking pictures because they want to be aware of what the competition is doing. And believe it or not, Microsoft and, and Sony in this case, they look at Nintendo a lot because Nintendo comes up with some crazy ideas sometimes. They do. And sometimes, you know what? The competition will try to capitalize on it, maybe try to do it better. That's just the way it is, and it's vice versa. Sometimes Nintendo looks at the competition. It happens. You just have to study up on your enemy, essentially. Well, they're not really enemy. They're all kind of friends, but you know what I mean? You have to study up on your competition. But another interesting thing happened here, and they ask, well, what's your, what are you looking forward to the most with an E3 announcement? And they list the Super Nintendo Classic. I think this was confusing to everyone, because unless Microsoft knows something that we don't, maybe, I don't know, do they know stuff with Nintendo? That seems odd. Maybe they just heard about it online and they were like, oh, throw it in there. Let's see if people are actually interested in the Super Nintendo Classic over, you know, the Big Bad Scorpio, considering the NES Classic just outsold the PS4 and the Xbox One a month ago. Maybe people really are interested in something like this, and maybe we can think about building something with our licenses that we have and put out a little box as well. That's what's going on here, guys. That They're trying to do market research and see what's happening. I think a lot of people were just really weird to see a green Xbox, you know, survey come up for Xbox rewards members, and it's like, hey, what do you think about the Switch? <laughs> it's like they're asking their audience what they think about this system over here that, I, honestly... Some of them probably don't even own. <laughs> they just they just want to chime in on it. Um, I would be curious to see what the results are, to see what Xbox gamers think about the Switch. We'll probably never know, but, you know, it's a cool thought, I guess. The real question is, does this uh, confirm a Super Nintendo Classic Edition being announced at E3? Technically not, but I do see that being a place where they can announce it because they have this massive amount of momentum going into E3 with something like a Super Nintendo Classic because the NES Classic was really popular and you can kind of win back over all the fans by saying, hey, you know, we know you guys love the 8-bit system. What do you think about the 16-bit system over here? <laughs> and really, some of the NES games could still make it over there because all it is is an emulator, essentially. Why not? But I'll be curious to see if we actually do see a Super Nintendo Classic. That would be pretty cool. And that's it for News Wave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about any of the stuff we talked about today. Whether it is this Xbox Live survey, this Xbox Rewards survey, where they talk about the Nintendo Switch and a Super Nintendo Classic. Is that really, it's really a thing? Let me think about Rhyme being cracked. I thought it was pretty funny that it was cracked and that they kind of called out why the loading times were so bad. And it was almost like, hey, we'll just break right through DeNovo just to show you we can do it whenever we want. It, it can be done yesterday if we need to. I think that's pretty funny. Or maybe you're really excited about the possibility of a Grand Theft Auto coming over with Take Two, or you're really excited to see the new Need for Speed this morning. That's it for now, guys. I will see you next time.